We stole this design of handheld Tesla coil off Bandan DIY on YouTube because he provided a schematic. 3D printed the coil. And in the last episode, what's it doing? Managed to get a sort of reliable, that's not good, 300 volts DC power supply. Waveforms, light bulb, lighting. That's it. That's it. Hello, mate. It's your Uncle Dave here. Okay, so. Not quite ready, really, to run at 300 volts, but I've got the coil ready, and I've got a frequency generator, and I've got a power supply that can do 60 volts, so maybe we could have a little try at that voltage, just see what happens. Uh whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses there, Uncle Dave. Weren't we supposed to be using this schematic here, made by Ban Dan? Uh, and if so, if we're at the putting voltage into the coil part, then when do we do this controlling part here that controls how that voltage goes into the coil? Um, yes, there has been some developments in that area. Um, I did begin to build this and then I sort of started looking at data sheets and things and I started to lose faith in some of the things that Bandan said. So you remember that before this um, feedback part here, that was we found that that was wrong, uh, so that could have just been a mistake, I guess. But then I want to make a dual resonant solid state Tesla coil, um, which is, it was in the title. For this to be dual resonant, the primary coil here and this coil here need to resonate at the same frequency, which if you do some back of the envelope calculations, that wouldn't seem to work with these numbers that we've got here. And the other thing is, he says that someone has said, impressive, I presume the frequency is really high. And he said the frequency is about one megahertz. But this chip here that would be providing the kind of stimulating frequency doesn't go as high as that. So I can't see how that would work. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to keep these MOSFETs here. These are the switches that will switch the 300 volts that we made in the last episode. Put in the big beefy MOSFETs. Yeah, big beefy MOSFETs. Power MOSFETs. The IRFP460. Absolute beefcakes. Look, drain source voltage, 500 volts. Pulse drain current, 80 amps. Woo! So that's the primary coil of the Tesla coil. This one switches, then this one switches, then this one switches, then this one switches, then this one switches. And each time they go like bang, boo, bang, boo, bang, boo, bang, boo. And uh, if there's a coil in here, the secondary coil will sit in there and uh, hopefully lightning will shoot out the top. Look at the absolute devastation that has befallen the lab during this experimental prototyping period. Not my fault, of course, but once again, our arch nemesis, Entropy. This was a nice, tidy room before. You can only fight the universe locally. I choose to adopt a sporadic strategy, favouring a low energy path but with brief bursts of high energy, typically just before the weight of mess crushes my will to live. I made this um, thing that the coil screws into and it's got the primary coil around the outside. I've got seven turns there at the moment and the, the top just screws on. I've made a little pulse width modulator. Instead of using a chip here at all, I'm going to use my frequency generator and make a simple circuit that just switches that frequency generator signal on and off. Should be able to switch the signal from the frequency generator, which is the resonant frequency of the coil that we measured. So this is the signal, the on off signal, and this is the frequency. So if we zoom in, so you can see each one of those ons, where that goes on and stays on, that's our high frequency, so it's sort of pulsing that on and off. And that corresponds exactly to the switching on and off of these MOSFETs. Sorry about this mess, by the way. And then uh, of these MOSFETs here, um, and that should prevent them overheating because they can't really be on continuously at this kind of power. And up here, my big power supply now, which is at its maximum power, which is 5.1 amps at 61 volts. The MOSFETs are connected so that one goes on and the other one goes off. Power supply on. Ooh. I can hear something. I think I can see a little faint blue glow. It's very high pitched. Now the temperatures look okay. 
Oh look! Can you see my electrical screwdriver's glowing? That's supposed to only glow when it touches the mains. What? What? Can you see that? Oh, see what it does with this fluorescent bulb. Oh, look at that. So we're definitely getting very powerful radio transmission off there, aren't we? No wires, just like Nikola Tesla. <laughs> Crazy. That is exciting, wouldn't you say? We've actually got Spark shooting out of the coil! Ooh, what's it going to do when we connect it to 300? <laughs> do I look scared? I am scared. For the day has come. Um, I think I've wired everything up correctly for a full voltage run. Ooh, turn on the power. Both MOSFETs are on these heat sinks, you can see this thing here. Hopefully that'll help cool them down a little bit. <laughs> so this will probably charge this big capacitor. Here we go. We've got 150, 170 volts. This is uh, AC volts coming off the transformer. 250, so we're over mains voltage now at very high frequency. Quite a good signal on the scope up here. That's the signal that's going into that transformer there. You can see we're getting 280 volts now, which is presumably the voltage on this. This is actually now quite a dangerous capacitor. Well, I guess it's time to uh, see whether anything good happens. I mean, it seems unlikely that it's going to be anything good, right? I'm going to turn up the duty a little bit and then just switch it on and off the frequency. Okay. No idea. Okay. Whoa! Uh, yeah, I think we may have blown a MOSFET there. Okay. You can see right inside the MOSFET there. I can get my screwdriver all the way into it. That's not correct. So what I think happened was, because of this interference, I think it switched both of these on at the same time. And as you can see, the capacitor is connected across and it's just blasted them to pieces. Part of the problem was there was too much voltage on this capacitor as well. This capacitor still has 452 volts on it. So absolutely lethal. Why is it so high? So we can actually see here where the explosion happened and it's right in the silicon chip inside these massive MOSFETs. Look at that. You can see the uh, crater where it exploded right there. I actually um, picked apart the other one. There's a piece of it. It's very shiny. Fascinating. We just need to be a lot more careful next time and not be so Mm, careless. That's the word. Careless. These are rated for about 500 volts and uh, 20 amps. That's a lot of power. But we still beat them. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. I'm going to put this uh, little tiny resistor across it. But not really discharging very quickly. Exciting! And it did make a little sort of sound and then went kaboom. I'm going to try a, uh, I think this is a 3k resistor. Woo! <laughs> uh, I'll see you when I've got some new MOSFETs. <laughs> yes, the best.